come to order. And thanks everybody for coming out on a rather uh, difficult evening. Matt Carthy, as usual, will be taping uh, from northendwaterfront.com. Uh, any other members of the press here? Um, Phil's not here. I don't know if he's coming or not. So. Uh, he's the okay. <laughs> Any uh, government uh, representatives? She is? No, sorry. Nicole Leo from uh, Mayor Walsh's office. I just want everyone to know we're doing have a date for Boston Shines, and it's May 9th and 10th. This year we're doing it a little differently. Uh, we're dividing the city up into three sections. So you will see that some parts of the city will be doing Boston Shines on uh, the last weekend, April, and the first weekend in May. But we're doing it the last weekend. We're doing two days? Well, and we do the corporate day. So it's always a two day thing. Friday is the corporate day, and Saturday is the neighborhood day. But we're going to be doing it the 9th and 10th this time around. Thank you. Hi everybody, Maria Popolo from Senator Petroselli's office. Maria uh, number two? Uh, no. <laughs> Maria Lanza, Council of Flaherty's office. I have no announcements, just give a listen. Okay, thank you. All right, um, President's report. Um, we have Jesse Brackenberry, who's now the uh, Executive Director of the Greenway. Um, he's here tonight, and he's going to make a brief statement. And if any of you guys have any questions or um, statements, um, I'm sure we'll have time for it. Um, why don't you stand over here, Jim? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so I just wanted to introduce myself to many of you, or reintroduce myself to some of you. Um, I am the, the new executive director for the Greenway Conservancy. Um, I have been with the Conservancy for four years and have been serving for the, the last year as the acting executive director. Um, delighted to take the job. Um, I have a background in parks and I am um, usually not at these meetings, usually won't be at these meetings going forward because I have three very young kids um, who I'm usually at home putting to bed. Um, and so, um, I I prioritize that what I can, but if there are you know if there are times or questions or other things where I can be here and you know make sure that there's a, an open dialogue, I'm delighted to do that. Um, Amy Dwyer um, or others from our staff are are often here, and um, Robin is a wonderful board member for us, um, and, and so we want to make sure that there's a that there's a good dialogue. Um, part of that is on March um, 11th. We will have a community meeting um, in the North End um, about the North End parks. Um, uh, the, the two um, main North End parks, parcel eight and ten, as they're sometimes referred to, um, in a little bit of inside baseball. Um, the vote uh, that's, as I said, at Mariner's House. Um, the focus will be some planning we have been doing about um, the. Uh, horticulture in the North End, and would very much like to hear people's um, input and feedback, um, as well as some of the planning we're doing for some of the um, items that are that currently need fixing in the North End, um, in the North End parks. So, would be delighted to see you there. Would be um, happy to take any questions here. Um, Jim has kind of slipped me into the agenda, so also happy to sit back down and give your agenda back to you, Jim. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments? Um, let me ask you, uh, is there any plan yet for uh, parcel 12? Uh, how are you developing that? Um, sure. So, no, there is no plan yet for parcel 12. Um, parcel 12, again, in, in inside baseball, it's the, it's the park parcel um, with the ramps that um, divides the north end from the rest of the city and divides the north end parks from the wharf district parks. Um, we, at our October um, board meeting, public board meeting, talked about um, what a problem, but also what an opportunity that site is. It's so rare that there's a big piece of um, undeveloped open space that's in as prominent a location as that, because it's all an opportunity to talk about what could or should it be. Um, and it has been um, uh, it has been unfinished for quite a long time because it was originally the, the um, site for the, the Boston Museum. Um, just last year, they sort of officially threw in the towel. They haven't been officially de-designated, though it is in our lease, so we do the basic maintenance of the site. 
Um, we would like to begin a, a dialogue, a planning um, process for that. And um, we are thinking about what that looks like. Last summer, as many of you probably observed, there was a treatment on the chain link fence um, that, you know, a very small, minor thing. Um, I think this summer we'll look at doing some small things, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more, but um, nothing that, that looks anything like what a, a permanent use for the site would be. Um, that will require some real discussion and, and then some fundraising. Um, there's also the open question, I think, of whether those ramps will be covered by the state. Um, I, it's actually been included in a piece of legislation that is currently um, before the House and Senate that MassDOT would be required to cover those ramps um, and gives a timetable, though not a funding mechanism for that. That's not a piece of legislation that we have introduced, but one that I'm aware is being considered. So um, if you care about this, it might be a time to, to weigh in. Um, but uh, yeah, we look forward to having a broader dialogue. Um, some of you may be aware that Ruff um, has talked about the, the possibility of, of a dog park there. We've had a great meeting with them, and I think that um, you know they are um, very interested in being part of a broader discussion and understand that it is a real, um, that it will take time to have that discussion. Right now, there are no utilities on site and um, you know none of the basic infrastructure that's necessary to do a dog park or a landscape park or any other idea we might come up with. And so coming up with that idea so that we can then um, move forward is something we, we absolutely have to focus on. I think it's an incredible opportunity. Okay. Uh, yes, on the subject of parcel 12, just uh, for information, um, 10, perhaps more years ago, an ad hoc group of residents of the first block of Commercial Street from the Green, what is now the Greenwood Bridge, got together and had a study prepared, which was done uh, as a result of public meetings, uh, on the question of what to do with Parcel 12. And if you haven't seen it, uh, you ought to, uh, it simply should be out on the table as part of the discussion. There was an architect and a landscape architect who were engaged, and three proposed architectural solutions were given, three proposed landscape architectural solutions were given. One of those landscape solutions was voted uh, uh, to be accepted by the community. And uh, since that work has gone in, it's something that the Greenway and you should be aware of. If you don't have one, I gave mine to somebody else, but I know who I gave it to, so I can get it back and give it to you. Um, that, that would be great. I, I would love to see it. I think, um, I mean, just to be clear, we certainly, as a nonprofit that cares for parks, will um, be very committed to a, an open space solution there, right? If the original um, proposal was a building, um, I'm, I'm sure there will be some that advocate for something like that. As a, as a park organization, we're going to be um, interested in having, in, in putting forward park ideas rather than architectural ideas. Um, uh, that's not to say that there isn't potentially a you know small pavilion or a something, but um, you know I think there's there should be a a really broad open dialogue about this. And there's there's a lot that is very different about our city and about the Greenway from ten years ago. But you're right. We I I would like to see that and have it. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ian Pistorio, our um, parks uh, chairman, is here. Do you have any questions for the new executive director of the Greenway? Okay, um, go right ahead. Uh, other than the, the legislative issues regarding the ramp and the fact that the museum was still hanging over our heads until not too long ago, uh, in your opinion, are there any other problems that have held up the discussions about developing this space? It's been you know, a long time coming uh, in terms of you know, since the, the big thing's been over. It has been a long time coming, absolutely. And it's why, um, I mean, it, it, we have heard that from many of you. Um, because of the designation of um, the Boston Museum, there, um, you know, the we were asked to not make any kind of permanent changes to the site, even bringing utilities to the site. Um, that, you know, I mean, that has uh, that has held things up. I think there's also. Um, 
think there's also been an interest in making sure that there is um, a great uh, a great answer to what the space can become, rather than um, making the space too nice and not ending up with a with a great answer in the long run. Um, but a lot of this is sort of that's a little bit more speculation about you know different people's perspectives on things. I think that fundamentally it is you know, it's going to be the Boston Museum, and because it was going to be the Boston Museum and they were designated, we were asked to be extremely light touch about anything we might do. And that's off the table now. Um, I think I am not the expert on uh, sort of the legal status of it, but I think the, the board for the Boston Museum had you know, officially said we're not interested in the site. I think that there may well be, and some people in this room are probably more expert on the steps that are necessary, um, but I think that there is a, an official act to de-designate them and designate the, the site in a different way. Um, but I don't think that that needs, now that the Boston Museum is officially thrown in the towel, I don't think that, that needs to stop a real discussion about what the space should become. Anybody else? Um, Jason? Jason with Prince Street. Is there any discussion with Parcel 6? Ah, um, which parcel is it? Uh, parcel 6 is um, to the north of the North End Park. So again, it's 10, uh, sorry, 12 is the rent parcel, then 10 and 8 are the two North End Parks that, that border Hanover Street. And then across the street from that is the other rent parcel, which was going to be, I believe, the YMCA. Yeah. Um, and is there's essentially no park space on it. It's just ramp, 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 ramp. Um, I, I think that there has been some discussion um, around the, the governance of the garage project as a possibility, but I'm not, I'm not aware of anything concrete. Um, and I think that the, legis the, the, the legislation that's being discussed, they would um, set a timetable for MassDOT to cover the ramps is specific to 12 and not to six or the other rent parcel 18. I hate talking in these numbers, right? It's like, you gotta have 20 years of history to know all these numbers. Okay, anybody else? All right, thanks very much, Justin. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks for giving me the time. We've kind of got an accent on the parks uh, this evening, and um, so I'm gonna announce the Good Neighbor Award, and it is uh, Miriam Ian Contardo Taglioni. And she is uh, getting the award for her work on Di Filippo Park, the gas oh. She lives on Prince Street, and she apparently does a great job volunteering to clean it up. So Janet Gelati will be giving her the award and taking a picture. Okay. Somebody will take, take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The other thing I'd like to kind of show for is a webmaster. We need someone who uh, is good with computers and has the time. I don't think it should take too much time. Is that right? Probably not but um, is willing to do that, or if you know somebody like that, um, just get in touch with either me or Ford, and um, we'll get them right to work, I think. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, I just wanted to make people aware that um, there is, uh, I don't see Sal here tonight, um, there is a meeting at City Hall on March 3rd at 6.30, which will be about the uh, upcoming uh, trash disposal contract that the city will be signing with some vendor. Um, and it's mostly about the hours of pickup. So that's very important. I plan to be there. Um, there was a petition that went around that um, said 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., three, three days a week. Um, and if you have a problem with that or you support that, I think it would be good to show up and, and let them know. Uh, July 1st is when the contract will take effect, so it's not going to be too much longer after that that they have to make up specs and get bids and then choose the final bidder. So uh, that's very important. Jim, that's again. It is um, March 3rd, a Monday night at 6.30 at City Hall, fifth floor. Uh, and the other thing I want to remind you about is the Old North Church has their annual benefit on um, Thursday, February 27th at the Fiamon Battery Wharf from 6 to 9. We have a, an executive committee meeting that night so we can't go. But, um, hopefully uh, a lot of you guys will be able to go. It's at the Fiamon Battery Wharf, as they say. All right, uh, membership committee, uh, Mary, you have something? I just want to remind everyone that if you have it removed, please do so. We still have quite a few people who haven't removed, so it's still $10, still a great bargain, and um, you can either uh, get the form on our website or 
It should still be there. Okay. Or I have the forms and you can send them in. So. Thank you. Okay, Victor, so we licensing and construction. Uh, yes. Uh, first, um, I want to reassure everyone that the fact that Dan Kubiak resigned as co-chair doesn't mean that he's not active in new or active in the community anymore. Uh, he put together a joint letter with the Beacon Hill Civic Association and the West End Civic Association as a result of several meetings, uh, comment letter on the Government Center Garage Project, comment letter to MEPA, Mass Environmental Protection Agency. Um, it was a lot of hard work, several meetings. The, the work of the letter was divided up between many of the people there and the general feeling and result was that we need to pursue this further. This, this group uh, or community, three communities uh, working together. And I can't help pointing out that uh, in 1961, may I be historical, Jane Jacobs in her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, says that neighborhoods can't do it alone. They must form districts. Cities are too big, neighborhoods are too small, and districts have the power to, uh, to <coughs> make change. And, uh, this is what uh, happened uh, with the government center garage comment letter. So, uh, Victor, we have some copies here. Oh, yes, yes. Dave said that he couldn't be here, uh, and, but that he would leave the copies of the letter out. So I'm glad to see that they are available. And I commend that to you to, to read. Uh, he was sort of the overall uh, guiding hand and uh, it's his work, but it's also the work of many others. Um, next, as far as ZLC is concerned, uh, at the ZLC meeting, uh, two things uh, came up. Uh, one was the uh, Davi Day restaurant uh, transfer, uh, which is on the agenda today for a vote. Uh, and also, there are copies of the Davi Day proposed plan and the uh, request that was filed to uh, remove restrictions on the license. It's my understanding that one of those requests for removal is no longer uh, being urged, and that is uh, alcohol only with food orders. Uh, but we, we can ask uh, when the deputy presentation is made whether that is still uh, not being urged. That is not being urged to cancel it. Um, and the other matter that came up at the ZLC meeting was Eagle Bank, which is going to occupy the uh, long vacant space uh, next to Green Cross Pharmacy. Um, there were no abutters. No one ob objected. No one opposed. And so based on the authority which the uh, members gave us several months ago, on the recommendation of the ZLC committee with the consent of the executive committee, we wrote a letter of no objection to the board of appeals. Okay, thank you. Sir.